Having surgery as treatment for Crohn's can feel like a big step, but you're not alone. We're here to help you understand your options and make an informed choice about your treatment and care. You and your IBD team should decide together what is best for you. This is called shared decision-making. Talking about surgery can be confusing. So let's start by taking a look at the most common parts of the gut that are involved in surgeries for Crohn's. The gut starts at your mouth and ends at your bottom, or anus, where poo passes out of your body. The gut is made up of your stomach, your small bowel, which is made up of the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum, and your large bowel, which contains the colon and rectum. Many of the common surgeries for Crohn's are minimally invasive. Keyhole surgery, where the surgeon makes four or five small cuts and passes a camera, lights and tools through the cuts to see and work on the bowel. Another way of operating on the gut is by open abdominal surgery. The surgeon makes one larger cut in the tummy and can see inside without using cameras. Both keyhole and open abdominal surgery are done under general anaesthetic which means you are fully asleep and cannot feel any pain during the operation. There are several types of surgery available to treat Crohn's disease. Let's go through them one at a time. Strictoplasty repairs strictures, which is a narrowed section of the small bowel caused by scarring or inflammation. Your surgeon will cut open the narrowed section, reshape the cut, and then sew the cut back together in the opposite way it was cut open. This makes the narrowed section wider. If you have long strictures or lots of strictures close together, your surgeon may recommend a more complicated type of strictureplasty or a resection. Resection means removing or cutting out part of the gut. This is one of the most common surgeries in people with Crohn's. In a resection, the surgeon removes the damaged part of the gut. They then join the healthy sections back together, a process which is called an anastomosis. Resections can be used in the small and large bowel. A common type of resection is an ileocecal resection, where the end of the small bowel, the ileum, and the start of the large bowel, the cecum, are removed. The healthy end of the small bowel is then joined directly to the large bowel. If your Crohn's is only affecting a small part of your colon, you may be offered a segmental colectomy. This means taking out a small section of the colon. The two healthy ends of the colon are then joined together. If your Crohn's is causing inflammation or a blockage in the first part of your colon, you could have a right hemicolectomy. This removes the first part of the colon. The surgeon also removes the appendix and a very small part of the small bowel. The small bowel is then joined up to the remaining half of the colon. During a subtotal colectomy, the surgeon removes the colon but leaves the rectum. The surgeon then brings the end of the small bowel, called the ileum, to the surface of the tummy and makes an ileostomy, also known as a stoma. Bowel contents pass out of this opening into a stoma bag. In a colectomy with ileorectal anastomosis, the surgeon removes the colon and then joins the end of the small bowel to the rectum. Unlike a subtotal colectomy, this means you can poo out of your bottom as you would not have a stoma. During proctocolectomy with ileostomy surgery, the whole colon, rectum and anal canal are removed. The surgeon makes an ileostomy, also called a stoma, by bringing out the end of the small bowel through your tummy wall. Bowel contents pass out of this opening into a stoma bag. This surgery is irreversible and the ileostomy is permanent. A stoma nurse will support you and give you practical help and information on living with a stoma. Contact your IBD team 
or visit our website for more information on risks and benefits of surgery, preparing for surgery and other treatments for Crohn's.